how do you make that transition from a dropshipping uh, business into an actual brand? Like, what does that look like? It's not easy. People think it's as simple as you have a successful product, you white label it, here's your brand. Mm. That's not the case. Sometimes you actually have to create a new version of that product because the existing one's crap. So mm. you have to go through a lot of communication with the supplier saying, look, I actually want to manufacture a new product. Now, sometimes the, the easiest method is white label the product, just put your logo on it, make a custom package. Now you have something called a brand because mm. you've got your 3PL, et cetera, in place. Um, but me personally, I don't really like that route anymore. I used to do it a lot back in my early days, but nowadays I feel like with a lot of competition out there, unless you either make a new version of the product, a lot of suppliers and manufacturers will allow you to create a custom version. They'll make a slight adjustment to it, but you'll have to order quite a decent amount in minimum order quantity. Mm. That's the route I like to go down. And also when you're building a brand, it's about what emotion you bring towards the brand. It's not even just the product. It's about how you make somebody feel yeah. when they buy from you. Yeah, like people buy certain products because of the way it makes them feel. You buy Apple because you like the way Apple makes you feel as a consumer when you use it. Mm. So it's also about building that identity. That's very hard. That's the hardest part, by the way. The identity building is very, very hard. So how would you go about doing that? So when you're building an identity, you need to first off know who you want to sell to, who are those people, what are they interested in, and how do you want to reflect upon them in terms of the brand? So for example, if you're selling a high, high-end streetwear brand, which is what I've done in the past, so first of all, it's streetwear, high-end, but why is it high-end? Why do you want it to be high-end? And why would the person buy it from you? And what's the reason why they want to buy it from you? Number one, they like streetwear. Number two, they like what streetwear stands for. What's the background? Like, you know, music's very related to streetwear, mm -hmm. so you have to understand that. And then why do they want high-end streetwear? Maybe they want high-end streetwear because they want to be able to go to a restaurant but be allowed to go in because it doesn't look like it. Sorry, it meets the, um, what's it called, the the dress requirements. You know, mm -hmm. when you go to yeah. a restaurant, they're like, oh, you can't wear that because it's it's classed as a, you know, a joggy bottom or a tracksuit. So you have to then find a way for them to look the same, but get in. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know that might be sounding weird, but it's like I said, these people love streetwear. They're not allowed to wear it in a restaurant because it's classed as not mm. the dress code. So how can I make it look appealing mm -hmm. in a high-end wear? So if you look at all these high-end brands now like Dior, et cetera, they're all doing, for example, cargo trousers. Yeah. That are $2,000. Mm. So that's the point I'm trying to make. It's about how you reflect on somebody. Why do they want it? Is there a problem, et cetera? So that's, that's really it. Yeah, makes sense. I think just going back slightly to what you said about mm -hmm. how a lot of people think just taking their dropshipping product and sticking a logo on it, now mm -hmm. they suddenly have a brand. <laughs> um, I appreciate that's obviously not the case, but when someone does do that mm -hmm. or when they do transition away from a dropshipping product to or multiple products to a brand, I think what seems to be a common fear within e-com is someone else just then ripping your product. Mm -hmm. like it almost seems like a lot of the time people don't want to put their face to a brand or publicly tell people because they're afraid that other people are just going to rip it. Mm. So is there anything you can do to prevent that? Like obviously, yeah, making a product that outcompetes everyone else and mm -hmm. truly meets the demands of the ICP, but mm -hmm. is there any way you can protect your brand from just being ripped off? It's very hard. So I'll go through a few ways we do it. So with our content, so we always try and strive to be the best content creators for our brand in mm -hmm. terms of if some people are selling similar products or the exact same one just without the logo on it, we make the best content for that product. We are literally the leaders in the space for the content. Now, of course, with being the leader in the in the space, people are going to rip it mm. and try and run it. So we have two VAs that will report all the guys using our yeah. ads. So we hire two VAs and everyone can do this. You can hire just one VA, let them go through the ads library, give them keywords that people use to you know advertise the product. And if they find people ripping your ads, you just report them. Mm. And it works effectively. Don't get me wrong. It's very time consuming. That's where you need a VA to do it. That's the one method that we use. And then, like I said, if you're the best person at content, you'll stick out yeah. behind everyone else. The only other option you can possibly do is make your own version of the product, but that's very, very expensive mm. because the minimum order quantities goes from a hundred to a thousand to 10,000. Mm. Okay. And when you do come to making that transition from dropship to brand, can you typically do that with the same dropshipping agent or the same supplier that you've already got, or do you need to look elsewhere? Some offer, you know, three PR services, okay, fulfillment services, mm. warehouse and services. Some of them offer it. Is it a good idea? Sometimes not. Um, at the end of the day, sometimes you have, you just, there's a saying, if there's a jack of all trades, they're typically not good at 
one of them or all of them. Mm -hmm. So you want to find companies that are very, very good at 3PL, warehouse and fulfillment, and they don't do everything else. Again, like I said, a lot of these companies now, all the big names, they're all offering all of all in one solution. Mm. Is it the best? No. Yeah. I think you should find a dedicated company. Um, there's a few that I've used in the past. Uh, is it okay if I mention them? Yeah, of course. Ecom Ops, I think that's their name. We've used them a lot. We've used Fulfillment. We've used a lot of Honest Fulfillment as well. We've used a lot of companies and we've had great experiences. So I think what people should do is they should shop around, mm -hmm. get quotes. Again, when you transition into a brand, it's about who can offer you the lowest minimum order quantity at a fair rate of product price and shipping price as well. Mm -hmm. If you can get those three, it's very, very good. Yeah, Because a lot of people will find somebody that you're going to be thinking, oh my God, the shipping price is very cheap. The shipping times are very good. They're also saying that, you know, the product cost and the shipping's all good in one. But then when you look at how many you have to order, it's crazy. Mm. Okay, so it's the minimum order quantity that gets you that typically That typically pays the <clears throat> demand of how much you're going to pay, how much it's going to cost to ship. But if you can get all three in a decent rate, again, when you transition, you want to minimize risk because mm. there's, that is like a big jump. Imagine there's two bridges, a bridge here, a bridge here. You're literally jumping over nothing. Mm. So if you fall, if you've then decided to invest in a thousand units, you're going to fall really hard. Yeah. But if it's only 50, you're going to fall here. Mm. So the point I'm trying to make is that you choose how hard you want to fall because it's a very big jump and there's no yeah. guarantees it's going to work.